these are the bones of one of the world's first dinosaurs. Entombed in New Mexico, in rocks 220 million years old, this deadly design became the prototype for the largest and most terrifying creatures ever to walk the earth. This sprawling 20,000 acre ranch north of Albuquerque, New Mexico is haunted in more ways than one. Legend has it that at sunset, eerie creatures appear in the sky. Indians feared them and stayed away. Spanish settlers saw them too and christened the area Los Brujos, the ghost ranch. These ghosts have been busted, and we know what they are. One of the most vicious predators ever known. Called Coelophysis, at first it seems like an unlikely killer. Only six feet long and three feet tall, it was small, streamlined, and lightly built. But for sheer terror, Pound for pound, it was one of the most innovative creatures of its time. Two hundred and twenty million years ago, during the late Triassic period, life on Earth was undergoing a dramatic change. The pace of evolution was quickening, but bizarre prehistoric reptiles still dominated the land. Metoposaurus, an eight-foot-long amphibian, lurked in streams, snapping up fish with its huge flat head. With long snouts, stout legs, and armor plating, phytosaurs looked almost like modern crocodiles, and the plant-eating Desmatosuchus evolved thick skin to protect itself from attack. Out of an infinite variety of lumbering, cold-blooded reptiles came Coelophysis, with a new twist. The age of the dinosaurs had begun. For paleontologist Bob Barker, it was love at first sight. I think Coelophysis is incredibly neat because it was a dinosaur that made me fall in love with fossil bones. I saw a display of Coelophysis skeletons, dozens of them, when I was nine years old in New York the American Museum, the world's most beautiful dinosaur hall. And beginning the hall, beginning your trek through 160 million years, was this very animal. It was elegant. It was long-legged. It had an intelligent, I don't know, subtlety to the way it carried its head. It was just gorgeous. The Ghost Ranch, New Mexico, July 19th, 1947. Three paleontologists were on a routine field trip. Ned Colbert, George Whitaker of the American Museum of Natural History, and amateur fossil hunter Thomas Girardi were on their way to the petrified forest in Arizona when they decided to stop here on a whim. Colbert knew about Ghost Ranch. He had seen crocodile fossils from the area and wondered if there might be more, but no one was expecting much. Then, on a slope a half mile east of the ranch, Whitaker found a small claw. Further up the hill, the team uncovered some unusual bones. It wasn't long before Colbert realized that what they were finding was no crocodile. Colbert had glimpsed bones like these once before. A handful of fragments found in 1876 had been packed away in the American Museum but the creature they belonged to remained a mystery. Now, here, thousands of bones, hundreds of complete skeletons were lying about.
this was a dinosaur graveyard. Unlike reptile bones, these were hollow and lightweight, the hind legs long and lean, and the skull pointed and filled with jagged teeth. Ultimately, they pieced together the first complete coelophysis, a powerful, upright, two-legged dinosaur built for speed. The appearance of Coelophysis inaugurated the age of dinosaurs and launched its kind on an evolutionary journey that would end with none other than mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is the Triassic. This is the dawn of dinosaurs. This is when they make their Darwinian debut. And this is the form they took. They weren't giant monsters. They weren't T-Rex yet. They were the understudies of nature, the small coyote-sized predators. Word of the discovery spread quickly. Hundreds of coelophysis were big news, but Colbert's problems were bigger. Even with an army of volunteers to dig them out, the work was slow. Once exposed, the skeletons were a jumbled mass of tangled limbs, tightly packed together by solid rock. It soon became clear that they would have to be moved. Divided into blocks five feet square and two feet deep, an area the size of a basketball court was eventually transported across the country. In all, 24 blocks were shipped to 15 different museums in one of the largest collaborative efforts in the history of American paleontology. The last block wasn't removed until 1986. Even then, tons of fossils were left behind, buried in the hills where they were first discovered. To house them, a museum was eventually built at Ghost Ranch, where today, 50 years later, the painstaking effort to free the dinosaurs is still going on. Using nothing more than a microscope and a dental pick, excavator Alex Downs has been working on this lab for the past five years. The easiest thing to see on the block is probably the right foot of a juvenile coelophysis. Uh, this is the second, third, and fourth toe. This is his ankle. The knee has been pulled away here. It's actually the right leg twisted over to the left side. This is the thigh bone, and it goes with this backbone coming toward me with the little ribs. In this block alone, the number of fossils is astonishing. Bodies are piled upon bodies. Just in this small area here, we have the remains of at least uh, half a dozen small uh, skeletons and partial skeletons. And if you add in this area, we've got a dozen. So a block this big would have at least 50 animals in it. And there have been a couple of dozen large blocks taken out of the Ghost Ranch quarry. So there must be at least a thousand or so skeletons in this incredibly rich deposit. A thousand prehistoric creatures wiped out in an instant. What awesome disaster could have struck? The answer is in the fossils. The skeletons are fairly complete, indicating that they were piled up quickly. The bones are generally unbroken and the lack of teeth marks indicates no predators had time to feed on them. A tightly closed mouth reveals that rigor mortis had had time to set in. 